My name is Kate Brain and I'm a Professor of Health Psychology in Cardiff University School of Medicine. Today I'm going to present the Abacus trial of a targeted cancer awareness intervention for adults living in deprived communities in the UK. The trial was funded by Yorkshire Cancer Research. The deprivation gap in cancer survival outcomes persists in part due to socio-economic differences in stage of diagnosis with patients from lower socio-economic groups more likely to be diagnosed at an advanced stage across a range of cancers. Prolonged time to presenting with suspected symptoms in primary care contributes to later stage diagnosis in lower socio-economic groups. And studies have found that lower awareness of symptoms, perceiving more barriers to help seeking, and cancer fear and fatalism are important influences on symptom presentation in this population. So there's a need for innovative approaches to improving outcomes in communities that are disproportionately affected by cancer in order to address this disparity. The Health Check intervention was originated by Tenevis Cancer Care, a Welsh cancer charity. They had already developed the Health Check and had been piloting it in deprived communities in South Wales. And we developed a mutually beneficial partnership where the charity had excellent grassroots engagement with local communities and we had the academic expertise to formally evaluate whether the, interven whether the intervention could encourage cancer symptom awareness and help seeking in this context. And we worked closely with ten of us over a number of years to refine and adapt the health check in a feasibility study that was funded by Cancer Research UK. The Health Check comprises an interactive touchscreen questionnaire which includes 29 questions about common cancer symptoms, cancer screening and risk factors. Importantly, it's facilitated by a trained lay advisor whose role is to engage and build rapport with participants and encourage change using tailored behaviour change techniques. There's a Health Check training package and manual which sets out standardised behaviour change techniques which are then tailored according to the participants' own results. At the end of the health check, participants receive personalised results and an A4 printout, which includes a brief action plan. Personalised results are delivered by the lay advisor using a traffic light system, where green results indicate no signposting or change, amber results indi indicate where change could be considered, and red results indicate that action should be taken. And this is really a pragmatic tool to support a positive conversation. In 2017, we received funding from Yorkshire Cancer Research to carry out a trial of effectiveness. Our objectives were to assess recruitment and retention rates, to test effects of the health check on primary and secondary outcomes, to assess fidelity, dose and context, and to understand the mechanisms of change in a process evaluation, and to provide an indication of costs associated with the health check. My colleague, Dr. Harriet Quinn Scoggins, is presenting the process evaluation findings in a companion presentation. Adults who were aged 40 years and over and who were able to provide consent were included in the trial. And they were also resident in deprived areas of South and West Yorkshire and South Wales. These are the measures that we collected at two weeks and six months follow up with cancer symptom recognition as the primary outcome. Measures were based on the validated awareness and beliefs about cancer measure. We assessed anticipated time to presenting with a potential symptom, perceived barriers, beliefs about cancer and state anxiety. Here you can see the trial recruitment and retention figures with around two thirds of the sample recruited in Yorkshire across healthcare and community settings. Overall trial uptake was 52%. Most participants, around 74%, were recruited in community settings with venues including community centres, job clubs and libraries. We had very high retention at two weeks and six months follow up with minimal missing data at both time points. Retention was increased by using a mixture of financial incentives and personalised follow-up, with options for data collection over the telephone at different times of day or by post or email. When split by recruitment area and setting type, 
you can see that around two thirds of the sample were resident in the 10 to 20% most deprived quintiles. So we were able to successfully reach and engage our target population. And the key message here is that recruiting in community settings is labour intensive because it depends on building good engagement with local gatekeeper staff, but it pays off in terms of engaging the target population. This slide shows the primary outcome. Total cancer symptom recognition scores at baseline, two weeks and six month follow up in the intervention and control arms. You can see here that symptom recognition was significantly higher at six months follow up in health check participants, but not at two weeks. So we didn't observe short term effects, but there was evidence of knowledge retention at six months. Looking more closely at baseline scores, there was a ceiling effect with high symptom recognition scores in both arms, which meant that there wasn't a great deal of room for change. And I'll present some further data shortly that sheds light on this pattern of results. In terms of secondary outcomes, there were no significant differences between groups at two weeks follow up on any secondary outcome, anticipated symptom presentation, perceived barriers to help seeking, beliefs about cancer or state anxiety. At six months follow up, health check participants reported earlier anticipated time to presentation compared to control. They anticipated going to see their GP sooner with suspected cancer symptoms. There were no other statistically significant differences at six months. We also ran a pre-planned principal components analysis on the total symptom recognition score, which revealed two distinct factors. Factor one including seven lesser known symptoms such as persistent fatigue and unexplained weight loss, and factor two including five well-known symptoms such as unexplained lumps and bleeding. We saw improved recognition of lesser known symptoms at two weeks and six months in health check participants compared to control. So this is evidence of the health check's ability to improve awareness of the sorts of symptoms that are more likely to be dismissed or attributed to things other than cancer. In summary, we were able to reach and engage our intended population with the intervention. The health check positively influenced cancer awareness and presentation behaviour, suggesting that behavioural interventions delivered in the community by trained peer supporters are important for engaging deprived populations in cancer awareness and normalising earlier help seeking. The intervention was delivered as intended and at low cost, and these data are reported separately. Overall, we're confident that we have enough evidence of public health benefit to scale up the health check for wider implementation. We're currently developing a study in infographic and a video animation for public dissemination using digital and social media. And we're also planning to scale up and evaluate implementation of the health check. And finally, I'd like to thank our trial team, our lay partners and co-applicants, and to thank you all for listening.